Hello, good evening class. <coughs> we start at 1810. Um, so today we will be dealing with the electrophoresis part in details. How the electrophoresis, what are the various types of it are. Um, so let's wait for one more minute and then we start. I hope you are all doing safe and doing fine. And nothing to be hurted. All safe. Okay, let's start. Got it? So electrophoresis technique uh, from that do uh, yes, uh, mainly we will deal this is mainly a theory part actually so what are the various techniques are available in the in the market for various purposes so in that sense this topic has been created so first is theory of electrophoresis so it's a method it's a physical method which analyze uh, and wall separations of compounds that are capable of acquiring electric charge in the conducting electrodes and electrophoresis may be defined as the migrations of charged particles through a solutions under the influence of, of an external electric field so ions that are separate suspended between two electrodes tend to travel towards the electrodes that bears opposite charges so there are two types of electrophoresis one is zone electrophoresis one is moving bound boundary electrophoresis yeah one is zone electrophoresis one is moving uh, boundary electrophoresis so zone electrophoresis is the one first one as a paper electrophoresis uh, gel electrophoresis thin layer electrophoresis and cellulose acetate electrophoresis and the moving boundary electrophoresis includes capillary electrophoresis isotark forosis isoelectric focusing immunoelectrophoresis so these all are our types of uh, various electrophoresis so we will discuss each one of them today from zone electrophoresis to moving boundary electrophoresis so zone electrophoresis it involves the migrations of charged particles on the sporting media um, and the paper cellulose cellulose acetate membrane starch gel polyacrylamide all these uh, materials are used in that so components separated are distributed into discrete zone on the support media and sporting media is saturated with buffer solutions small volume of the sample is applied as a narrow band so on applications of potential difference uh, it's mainly work so its advantages are it's it's good for biochemical investigation small uh, quantity of samples can be analyzed cost is low quite low in them and easy to maintain but on the other hand the disadvantages are uh, unsuitable for accurate mobility and isoelectric point determination so like 2d electrophoresis we have they are not that good 
and due to the presence of supporting media technical complications will be there such as capillary flow electrosmosis adsorption molecular savings are introduced into it so general methods of operations uh, saturations of media with the buffer sample application electrophoretic separations and removal of the supporting media so these are the general methods so it has electrophoretic chamber electrodes uh, diffusion barriers supporting stabilizing media all these includes into this that paper electrophoresis here uh, is a, so this was in general the methods works that you have a saturation over the media of your buffer then we put the samples then electrophoretic separations and removal of the supporting media so this is how we do it an instrument that we required for this uh, reaction is electrophoretic chamber we need electrodes diffusion barriers supporting stabilizing media so all these things are required for the same so 45 uh, volt dalt and dc 5 batteries of uh, 9 volt we use it and then we have electrolyte here and two glass plates in center and this is the pencil line we put so this is the paper filter and this way uh, we separate our molecules on this paper so this is of two types again paper electrophoresis horizontal and vertical in the horizontal it's mainly you have two different uh, buffer solutions and you add your electrodes positive and negative and you add on top filter paper strip and this air tightening house like on top so in between these your transmigration of your dna or anything that happens whereas in the vertical everything is same is just instead of its horizontal it's on vertical strip like this your things are on vertical strip so filter paper such as wattman number one or number three uh, are used of around three to five centimeter wide which gives a good effect and separations takes place uh, in 12 to 14 hours in them so advantages are that it's quite economical and easy to use and one of the disadvantages are certain compounds such as proteins hydrophilic molecules can be resolved uh, using this method and electrosmosis is one of the disadvantages then comes your continuous electrophoresis here the continuous electrophoresis includes your positive and negative ends on both sides and having the sample uh, reservoir yeah and then uh, you have sample components filter paper electrodes buffer solution and then we collect these samples so used for preparative scale purpose predetermined uh, sample volume of 0.2 ml per minute through the wall, uh, wall device is applied silica gel powered glass sand and agar gel can be used and potential difference of 500 volt is applied and pure compounds are collected in the separation containers the solvent is evaporated and the pure fractions are used in this case in between i have to check whether my things are fine it's going fine okay Then comes gel electrophoresis that we discussed zillion of times uh, in which we have a uh, like separation is done over the principle of molecular sieving technique that how much molecular size of your substances and they get separated over the gel and the gel is colloidal in the form in the solid form with 99% in water and it is important that which support media is electrically neutral. So different types of uh, gels which can be used are agar and agrose gel, starch, cephedex, polychromite gel. So these are the four different materials. And porous gels act as a sieve by retarding or in some cases by completely obstructing the movement of macromolecules while allowing the smaller molecules to migrate freely. So here you can see this is a glass light and support deck with a casting tray and a slot for the comb here. And then you put your uh, your gel over this agro solution it's get solidified then you add comb on top and after the adding the comb you remove it then you will have wells in it then with the help of uh, your dna micro pipettes here you can add your dna solutions 
<coughs> after loading the solutions uh, you with these cables uh, you can uh, attach to the power supply and then your things will be migrate towards the from negative to positive ends and you can have different things so we can use different types of gels like agar, agros, star, cephid, polyp my gels and porous gels that we use are like as act as a, a sieve here um, by by completely obstructing the movement of macromolecules while allowing the smaller molecules to migrate freely so your big smaller will migrate bigger will not so this is how we can do it this in vertical form and horizontal form your gel electrophoresis what vertical form we do it for the protein analysis and horizontal uh, we do it for the um, DNA analysis and the gels that we can use they could be agar gel and agrose gel so agar is a mixture of polysaccharides extracted from seaweeds and agrose is a highly purified uncharged polysaccharides dried from the agar so agrose is chemically basic disaccharides repeating units of 3 to 6 anhydro L galactose so the pore size may be predetermined by adjusting the concentrations of agrose in the gel and agrose gels are fragile and they are actually uh, hydrocolytes and they are held together by the formations of weak hydrogens and hydrophobic bonds so what are the advantages uh, they are easy to prepare small concentration of agar is required and resolution of is superior to that of the filter paper so following are some advantages and disadvantages again electro osmosis is high resolution is quite less and different sources of batches and uh, agar tend to have different results and widely used in the immune electrophoresis so this is a mainly the structure of your egg rose it's in the solid state initially you make it the temperature of 45 degrees celsius they started to make these ring like structures helical structures then even more there are even more final fine structures here but if you again heat it for 100 degrees celsius it starts opening and starts opening again so like this so let's see how we do this gel electrophoresis in this video This video will take you through the process for loading and running DNA samples on an agarose gel. You will be using a mini subcell to perform agarose gel electrophoresis. The subcell has an electrode wire running across the bottom of each end. This provides for an electric current to pass which separates the DNA fragments in the samples. First align the gel so that the wells are closest to the negative or black electrode. DNA is negatively charged and will move from the negative electrode through the gel toward the positive or red electrode. Place the agarose gel into the gel chamber. Add electrophoresis running buffer to the reservoirs at each end of the gel chamber and keep adding buffer until the wells in the gel are covered by at least 2 millimeters of buffer. Place your samples to be loaded in the correct order according to the lanes they are assigned to be run in. Check your lab protocol for this information. To obtain a DNA sample, slowly depress the plunger on your adjustable micropipette to the first or soft stop. Holding the plunger down, insert the tip of the pipette into the microtube with the DNA sample. Place the tip close to the bottom of the sample, then slowly release the plunger button. When loading the samples, keep the pipette tip perpendicular to the row of wells. This will reduce the risk of accidentally puncturing the wells with the tip. Lower the tip of the pipette until it breaks the surface of the buffer and is located just above or just inside the well. Slowly apply pressure to the plunger button and observe as the sample fills the well. Make certain you stop at the first stop on the pipette, pause, then slowly remove the pipette while keeping your thumb down on the plunger. Once all the samples have been loaded, avoid any bumping or movement of the gel chamber. This might result in the samples spilling into adjacent wells. Place the lid on the gel chamber with the terminals correctly positioned to the matching electrodes on the gel chamber, black to black and red to red.
Connect the electrodes to the power supply. Again, making certain the electrodes match the terminals on the power supply, red to red and black to black. Switch the power supply on. Then set the correct constant voltage for running the samples. See your lab protocol for this information. If a timer is available on your power supply, set the clock for the proper time for your run. Press the start button to begin the flow of current that will separate the DNA fragments. At this point, you should be able to see bubbles coming from the wires at each end of the gel box. Notice that the positive or red electrode has fewer bubbles than the negative or black electrode. In a few minutes, you should see the samples begin to migrate from the wells into the gel. Notice as your DNA samples run, the dye front moves from the negative electrode towards the positive electrode. So next is the polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis, that is PAGE. Uh, it is prepared by a polymerizing acrylide, uh, acryl amide monomers. So we have monomers of acryl amide, CH2, CH or CO, NH2. In the presence of methylene bisacrylamide, so acrylamide and methylene bisacrylamide. So this, this one, uh, to cross-link the monomers. So they get monomers like this. So polyacrylamide gel structures held together by covalent coarse cross links and the gels are tougher than the agros gels. So it is thermostable, transparent, strong and relatively chemically inert. And gels are uncharged and separated in variety of pore sizes. And proteins are separated on the basis of charge to mass ratio and molecular size and phenomena is called molecular sieving. So the advantages are gels are stable over the wide range of pH and temperature and gels of different pore sizes can be formed in this case and simple and separation speed is good comparatively. So this is the best most likely uh, method that we use in the science um, in the molecular biology lab whenever you get got a chance to work we go for page here. So there are also two or three different types of pages uh, according to the nature of gel. It could be native page or denatured or SDS page. In the native page, it's run on the non-denaturating conditions that your protein is not denatured in that. So separation is based on the charge size and shape and it's quite useful for the separations or purifications of mixture of proteins. Quite number of proteins could be separated in this method and this was originally mode of electrophoresis. So, sabse pehle, so first time the method that came to the a molecular biologist was this method only. And denatured page, uh, this is based on the molecular weight of proteins. Uh, in this, we denatured our proteins with the help of SDS, adding sodium dodecyl, uh, yeah, dodecyl phosphate into that. So here we can see we have a positive charge, a negative charge, cathode. Um, so the pink ones are the large positive charge ions and the green ones are the small uh, high positive charge and low positive charge are the red ones. Uh, these are the low positive charge and the, this scare ones are the high positive charge. So they remain in the middle. So in this way you can separate your molecules. So in the page procedure it's also quite similar like we have done before. So gel, we cast the gel and we add our samples, we maintain the pH, electric field is done um, so that no external solvent is added and the rate of migration depends upon the charge to mass ratio and at the end on the basis of electrophoretic mobility and gel filtration effect, uh, we get our sample at the end. So this is the page procedure, we can see our gel with the buffer with high voltage. So it's been stacked together in these two slabs and our samples is poured from the top so it's a vertical one so vertically you have two glass plates poured uh, bet between the gel 
and protein bands could be separated according to the relative molecular uh, weights and we can visualize with them various staining so in this way we get our stains like that then there is slab page uh, in this uh, your gel is cast as a rectangular slab inside the plastic frame and this slab is uh, placed vertically in buffer solutions taken in reserve it's like a western blot we do uh, in normal cases then for the visualizations after the electrophoresis is completed the molecules in the gel can be stained to make them visible so ethidium bromide silver commercy blue dye may be used for this process if the analyte uh, molecules fluoresces under the ultraviolet light a photograph can be taken of gel under the ultraviolet lighting conditions if the molecules to be separated contain radioactivity an auto radiogram can be recorded of the gels so sds polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis that is sds page SDS page is the one with the sodium dodecyl sulfate polyacrylate gel electrophoresis which is a technique widely used in biochemistry um so this is a combination of your page and SDS both which we use for forensic genetics molecular biology mainly to separate your proteins according to the electrophoretic mobility so in this SDS mainly is coated towards your proteins giving is a constant charge mass ratio due to the masking of charges of proteins by the large negative charge on the sds binding the proteins migrates along the gel in order of increasing size or molecular weights so sds is an ionic detergents which denatures secondary and non dulcified link uh, tertiary structures by wrapping around the polypeptide backbone and molecules in solution with sds have a negative charge within a wide ph range and negative charges on sds destroy most of the complex structures of proteins and are highly uh, and are strongly attracted towards an anode in an electric field so sodium do desyl sulfate sds page uh, in this we have a native protein we heat and we also had uh, sds we also have reducing agents like ddt because of that your protein is all open denatured and your negative charge of your sds is over that so that's the basic principle here so for the heating uh, for the using the reductant we use beta mercaphthenol or ddt in order to be, i mean using ddt will give a very foul smell even the beta mercaphthenol gives the foul smell but you can use whichever you feel like so large polypeptides bind more sds than the small ones so proteins end up with a negative charge in relation to the size so when treated with sds A reducing agents polypeptides become roads of negative charges thus we can separate the proteins based on their mass so these are the steps that happen so denature sample with sodium dodecyl sulfate uh, place mixture of proteins on gel and apply electric field and stains to visualize separate bands so you have a sds coated proteins yeah so sds is an ionic detergent that binds stoichiometrically to number of peptide bonds on the separate on the basis of size and then place mixture of proteins on gel supply electric field so here you have a partially separated proteins and then on the direction of migration and then according to the decreasing size your proteins will be separated then we can also use starch a suspension of granule starch should be boiled in a buffer to give a colloidal suspension and after the cooling it's give a semi solid gel due to intervening of the branch chains of a myelopectin in them so so we get a petroleum jelly like structure so at the end advantages are it's quite high resolution power as compared to before uh, electrophoresis that we have seen sharp zones are obtained and components that are resolved can be recovered in the uh, reasonable yield especially the proteins and that can be used for analytical as well as preparative electrophoresis an electroosmotic effects variations in pore size from batch to batch could be used so vertical uh, so this electrophoresis that we are talking this could be also of two types like the agros gel electrophoresis that we were talking uh, it could be vertical and horizontal and in this sample is mixed with the gel and soaked over the paper and then pressed over the gel and then we detect the stains by direct gravity meter or uv absorption now after doing so many electrophoresis uh, 
options electrophoresis experience experiments now comes your next one as a pulse field gel electrophoresis and which is done to separate large dna molecules the sizes of the dnas are quite big and it's not possible over the small gels so for that uh, we have this pulse field gel electrophoresis uh, in which uh, your electric field charge is periodically changing directions so i will show you how it's changing the directions that's the main principle behind this and and the periodic changing of the field directions leads to the various lengths of DNA react to the change at different rates. So separations of very large DNA pieces using PFG is made possible and the voltage is periodically switched among three directions. One that runs through the central axis of the gel and two that run at the angle of 60 degree either side. So here we can see the, your, your things, your electric field will be crossing all over the point and your DNA will be getting from most of the points these points like that. Then comes thinly electrophoresis which can be carried out in layer of silica, um, kaisuluger, aluminia. So less time consuming and good resolutions that we get. Widely used in the combined electrophoretic uh, chromatography studies in two dimensional study of proteins and nucleic hydro, hydrolysates. So it's contained, so cellulose acetate electrophoresis says it contains two to three electroacetyl groups per glucose unit and its absorption capacity is less than that of paper. And it gives sharper bands and provides a good background for staining glycoproteins. So advantages are no dealing of proteins or hydrophilic uh, materials. It's available in the wide range of particle size and layer thickness, give sharp bands and offer good resolutions. And high voltage can be applied which will enhance the solution, resolution. Then widely used in analysis of clinical biological uh, protein samples and it's quite alternative to your paper electrophoresis. Then comes your movie. So these are not so common one but as per the theory uh, if you open any you know uh, biotechnology but a reducing agent we use DDT or beta mercryptanol. So both of them could be used in that. So uh, my point is here that uh, mainly your SDS page, uh, your denatured uh, gel, your natured gel, uh, uh, native gel, sorry, um, agrose gel electrophoresis. Uh, these are the most common that we use in the lab because our results are easily obtainable uh, using them. So that's why we, we keep them as a main thing but these ones are also important if you have big work then you can you can use it for yourself so then there comes the most important capillary electrophoresis this is also done in order to check uh, your big proteins particles uh, which are not possible with the normal electrophoresis so we use a very high voltage typically in this and the capillary that we use here is around 50 micrometer in a diameter of 0 0.5 to 1 millimeter in the length so due to electroosmotic flow, all sample components migrate towards the negative electrode and the capillary is filled with electro electrolyte solutions which conducts current through the inside of the capillary. And electrodes are inserted into electrolyte reservoirs to complete the electrical circuit. So this is the capillary, capillary electrophoresis setup is you have one side cathode, another side anode, right? and then you have a computer in between and then you put uh, your your materials are here yeah in the over the cathode and then with the light source what you see is that your things started to migrate yeah things started to migrate and then um, you have a chart recorder for the data in so in the sample application is done by high voltage injections so potential is applied causing the samples to enter the capillary by combinations of ionic attractions and electrosmotic flow. Then pressure injection, uh, pressure difference is used to drive the sample into capillary by applying the vacuum. So when potential difference is applied, net migrations occurs in the directions of the cathode. Even substance with a negative charge uh, migrate in the direction of cathode due to the phenomena called electrosmotic flow. So what is this electrosmotic flow? Is the surface of silicate gel uh, capillary contains negatively charged functional groups that attracts positively charged counter ions. So in the electrosmotic flow, 
so on the side on the glass capillary you you have all negative points so they will attract all the positive so in the center you will have osmotic charges present that is plus minus all um, like this so this overall solvent movement is called electrosmotic flow so during the separation uh, whichever the uncharged particles will move at the same velocity as the os osmotic uh, electric flow with a very little separations where the positive charge will move faster and negatively move slower so in this way we can separate things then comes the isotark ferrosis so in this technique we depends on the development of potential gradient so based on the it's based on the boundary electrophoresis that it's leading uh, electrolytes with high mobility with analytes and training electrodes with the low <coughs> just a second So solution in which separations take place is normally in aqueous medium which contains sucrose to provide a higher density to the solution. So where the separation by isoelectric focusing depends upon the existence of pH gradient in the system and the technique of isoelectrophoresis depends on the development of potential gradient. So like this you will have the separation of your things. Then comes immunoelectrophoresis uh, in which antibodies are produced uh, by immune system response to fire, uh, foreign macromolecules and each antibody is specific to specific epitope of your micro antigen and this allows the antibody detection and quantitation of a specific protein complex mixture. So when electrical potential is applied to study of antigen antibody reaction it is called immunoelectrophoresis and the antibody are electrophoretically separated and antigen diffused towards each other resulting in the precipitin arcs where antigen uh, antibody complexes form. So antibody is placed in trough cut parallel to the direction of the electrophoresis. So like this you have unpaired arc here you have the antibody and the antigens are coming getting attached to it. Then we run them as a result precipitin arcs will be formed due to the antibody antigen uh, complex formation. So this is done mostly with 2% agar gel with the antigen mixture applied to the smaller circular wells of agar. Initial electrophoretic separation is carried out on the depend upon the charge and molecular weight. So after the initial separation the antibody mixture is then introduced into narrow slot uh, about 0.5 to 1.0 centimeter from the separated antigens. So during this period the antigen components diffuse readily outwards towards the diffusing Antibody and precipitations take place in elliptical arcs as related antigens and antibody diffuse into one another. So its applications are widely in enzymology, membrane biochemistry, microbiology and immunology. So quite useful in the clinical, forensic and human genetic laboratories. Then comes your isoelectric focusing that we have discussed yesterday in details this 2D gel so I will not repeat this your whole 2D gel electrophoresis where you have your soluble stable pH gradient and your molecules get into the their isoelectric point and then we separate them according to their 2D dimensional gel electrophoresis we took that your IEF IPG strip and we put them over the gel and then we run for it so applications are it's it's a DNA sequencing many many applications are there you can go for so students that's it for today um, today is a short lecture uh, it's all about electrophoresis it's not much in this so I have already shared these lectures so mainly our task for today was to introduce to what various kinds of electrophoresis that that are available even though we have discussed about uh, most of the protein isolation techniques yesterday from your uh, protein isolation purification topic so yeah, I hope uh, it was a, a you all were um, you like this today, and uh, nonetheless, uh, tomorrow we tomorrow is Friday. Tomorrow is the last day of this week of our workshop. So we are done with the six protocols so far, six uh, day work. So now uh, I will take you tomorrow uh, regarding chip, this chromatoimmunoprecipitation uh, techniques, 
and the blotting techniques. In this, uh, we will go through all your southern blotting technique, western blotting technique, northern blotting technique, one by one with proper videos, with proper channel of uh, experiments, how we uh, make your samples, how we run our gels in them. So that's, that's for tomorrow. So thank you very much for today. Today is we are done for yeah we are done for today. Thank you very much.